fly with the high school, yeah. Fly with the high school, I'm a fly with the high school, yeah. Hey everyone, welcome to this Berserk documentary. I'm your host Cattle Hoop and we're going to talk about the author Kentaro Mira, story and characters of Berserk. The song you heard in the intro was produced and performed by me, and if you liked it, you can stream it on Spotify and all other streaming platforms, links down below. Also, I would like to address that this documentary contains spoilers, don't continue watching if you haven't seen Berserk yet. First, we're going to start with the author of Berserk, Kentaro Mira. Unfortunately, he passed away recently. He was working on Berserk for more than 30 years, reaching tens of millions of readers worldwide with this amazing, apocalyptic, berserk, astral, utopian world he created in the story of Berserk. It starts in the first chapter of the manga with the main character, Guts, having sex with a sex monster at a postal. The apostle thought it trapped our man Guts, however, the man continues to rape the fuck out of it. And in my opinion, there was a brilliant way to read us into the world of edginess that is Berserk and introduce us to the god of edge, Guts. But then it gets a little bit interesting when a group called the God Hands appears at the end of this prologue. Guts seems to know one of them, a black hawk with a cool design, and Guts does not seem to like him that much. At that stage, everything stays a mystery. With that information, we get into the Golden Age arc where we get to know the backstory of Guts. Gus was found as a baby by a group of mercenaries under a tree of dead bodies, including his dead mother, somehow alive. A slave woman decided to take care of him and be his mother. Gus then proceeds to grow up in the battlefield, living by the fighting and the swords and whatnot. So we can clearly see how a person who lived such a life can grow up to become nihilistic and believing that life has no meaning, it's all about fighting. It's all until he met Griffith. So let us talk about Griffith and we come back to Gus later. Griffith is best girl. He's one of my favorite characters of all time. He's very charming and attractive. Personally, I'm not gay, but I really like his lips and hair. But honestly, he has a lot more going for him other than looks. He got personality. I would like to point out that I think he's really similar to Diego Brando from Jojo Part 7 and the aspect of them having one goal and that is power and they would do anything to fulfill that goal. Griffith is a visionary type of person. He has the dream of having his own kingdom. I've always been attracted to these kind of characters, Griffith, Dio, Jonah Giovanna, Ichiha Sasuke, Light Yagami and also non-anime characters like Leonardo da Vinci and Elon Musk. And there is a lot but I'll stop there. Griffith has remarkable skills in leadership. He knows how to leverage his resources and allies in a highly pragmatic and strategic way and it shines best when he, ca when he, ca when he captured Doldre which was an essential key in the ending the Hundred Year War, not to mention the countless previous attempts were made and ended up in failure. But now, let's not act like Griffith is a good person. He's not. I see a lot of people on the internet saying that he didn't do anything wrong. And well, yes, he did. He's a fucked up person who will do anything to fulfill his goal. He sacrificed Guts and the Band of the Hawk with the brand with brand new them so he could become an apostle bitch and join the God Hand group. But at the end of the day, it's fiction and it all adds to his complex personality, especially the fucked up part. Now Griffith and Guts has an interesting relationship and it's like they both came out of a Friedrich Nietzsche's book. I would like to talk about a concept by Nietzsche called Ubermenschi. Ubermenschi in German means overman, superman or beyond man. However, I'm going to call, I'm going to call it Hawkman for the rest of this video. So Hawkman is over Nietzsche, okay? The Hawkman is Friedrich Nietzsche's answer to the problem of nihilism. Nietzsche begins his premise with the assumption that God does not exist, and if God does not exist, thus objective morality and inherent value are not possible, since there is no ultimate being that exists to create morality and value in the first place. Nietzsche's Hawkman will act as his own God, giving himself morality and value as he sees fit according to him alone. The Hawkman is neither slave or nor master as he does not impose his will upon others. 
The Hawkman is an independent individual who has the power to banish hurt instincts from his mind and become a master of self-discipline. Above all, the Hawkman is the next step in human evolution. Every human must deal with the question, what is the meaning of life? Some say God and heaven, others say his ultimate objective virtue. But the Hawkman will give life value that is not based on superstition or mystical folly. The Hawkman finds value in his life experience because it cannot be reasoned out through argument and logic. The Hawkman would say that the meaning of life is that you die, so make it valuable. Well, Griffith used to be a hot man, but at some point in the story, he stopped being one. But Griffith used to be an actual hot man. A hot man is the one who is willing to risk all for the sake of an enhancement of humanity. In contrary to the last man, which we're going to call bad man for the rest of this video, whose sole desire is his own comfort and is incapable of creating anything beyond oneself in any form. This should suggest that a Hawkman is someone who can establish his own values as the world in which others live their lives, often unaware that they are not pre-given. This means a Hawkman can affect and influence the lives of others. In other words, a Hawkman has his own values, independent of others, which affects and dominates others' lives. They may not have predetermined values, but only heard instinct. A Hawkman is then someone who has a life, which is not merely to live each day with no meanings, when nothing in the past and future is more important than the present, or more precisely, the pleasure and happiness in the present, but with a purpose for humanity. And all those qualities are qualities Griffith used to possess. First, a hawk man risked all for the sake of, of enhancement. Now that's what Griffith did. He sacrificed everything for the sake of his dream, which is to get his own kingdom. And now we got Guts, a nihilist. Both guys are opposite to each other, in which Griffith is the overman and Guts is the last man. Guts gets fascinated with Griffith when he first met him and starts his own journey to find meaning in life and his purpose. We see Griffith telling Charlotte what a real friend is to him and it's someone who would never depend upon another's dream. Someone who wouldn't be compelled by anyone but would determine and pursue his own reason to live. Guts overhears Griffith saying this and gets fascinated to the point where it completely changes him. Guts stops being a nihilist and sees he sees the overman philosophy as something he resonates with and starts his journey to find his purpose. And for that reason, he decides to leave the band of the hawk and, there's, and here's where their turning point beholds. Griffith falls down and refuses the fact that he lost a part of his military. While it may seem shocking for a leader like Griffith to dwell on a loss of a soldier, even though equivalent to 100, Griffith's loss was much more than that. Griffith liked Guts and grew dependent on him, violating the hawkman philosophy. Griffith proceeds to have sex with Princess Charlotte as a resemblance of power and authority and not desire. It was at this point that Griffith fucked up and became the contrarian of the Hawkman and became a bad man submitting to his faith while Guts becomes an Ubermenshi and decides to reject his faith imposed on him by Griffith through branding and wages war on these apostle hoes. When Griffith, when Griffith becomes Femto post-eclipse, he seems to stay human, however suppressing his emotions which Nietzsche's philosophy is against. Nietzsche's view is that emotion is natural, its repression or suppression is psychologically disastrous. He disagrees on inhibiting and thwarting human over nature. Rather than an overman must accept, rather that an overman must accept his own nature and divert the energy of primitive impulses into a culturally higher or socially most acceptable activity. Basically, an overman must be able to control this and divert the Dionysian power into something creative. To Nietzsche, Dionysian is profoundly irrational rather than negatively or stubbornly irrational. This is Griffith's tragedy, a person who was on the right path and even taught Guts how to walk that path but couldn't deal with the ramifications of this and ended up becoming the opposite of what he once tried for. Griffith gained power from others to benefit himself, which is something that Nietzsche encouraged with the condition of remaining reliant on one's own strength and not become dependent. Griffith became dependent on Guts, which led to his downfall. Guts is a genius fighter who honed his swordsmanship to his finest and continues to do so. He also considers, the, considers it a part of his purpose in attaining mastery. Guts' ego has a manifestation, a Hellcat or Beast of Darkness, similar to Griffith's Femto. Guts Helka took over him a couple of times, and especially when he almost raped Casca like Griffith did. Guts, on the other hand, works hard to suppress that evil part of him and only channel it into product productive stuff like killing apostles and other demonic creatures. And now we reach the end of the documentary. Thanks for watching, and make sure you check out the White Hawk song.